getting the supplies lined up. A couple sizes of rope. Holy. This is my uh, funnel in order to measure the viscosity of my drilling mud. Litmus paper. I guess the pH should be around eight and a half. So that sodium carbonate will raise the pH of my water. The drill bit, I'm going four inches wide to accommodate a two and a half inch inner diameter well casing. It's my power head. I'm gonna mix my mud. Got the Super Gel X high yield drilling mud. All right, so here's my litmus paper. You can see I'm going for like a, a dark green. It's gonna be ideal. Let's see what this does. Maybe it's a six. Be darned. Surely I did. Looks like 11. So this should be eight and a half to nine and a half before adding the bentonite. And I definitely overshot that. Dang it, why did I do so much? I bet we're 11 or 12. So I'm gonna dump some water out and try it again. Looks good to me. Next, we're mixing mud. got the trash pump running and that's both uh, sucking out of this barrel and outputting into this barrel which creates some good churn and then I use this flour sifter to slowly add the bentonite. The pump does an excellent job of mixing this. You can go from the viscosity of water all the way up to you'll see at the end it's like pudding. You don't want to go too fast or you get clumps. Here you can see I'm just kind of uh, breaking up some of the surface clumps, but I came to learn the pump really eventually takes care of that. All in all, this took I think around 45 minutes, and I used the better part of one bag of bentonite. This is just a standard trash pump. I think that's an inch and a quarter outlet and a two inch input hose. That worked fine. Oh, I think it actually might be a one inch uh, green outlet pipe, uh, outlet hose. I'm sucking in off the bottom of the barrel and uh, discharging into the top to get some good, good churn. Pretty cool. I just washed my hands, but I just washed my hands and then we get I've got about half a bag of this in there. And now it just like turns to this uh, mud. And we'll let that 
keep pumping for another 15 minutes or so, get it really well mixed. And uh, I tested the marsh, the marsh funnel, the, uh, the viscosity measurements, and it was like way high, like 100, uh, one quart in 100 seconds. So I think I at least have to cut it by two. So I'm filling my mud pits. You can see I got, this is gonna be where my hole is. I just got a little start. I'm gonna have um, a tunnel, uh, tunnel there. And then this one will fill out. This will be the first settling pit. And it'll come out of here. And then here's the second settling pit. And I hope it works. Alright, I think my mud is fully hydrated. Got this side full of water. This side is empty. Got my little bit hooked up. Here I'm pumping the mud out of the mixing barrel into the mud pits. Oh, it really only just takes a few seconds to empty that whole barrel. Filling it from the back, so this is the, the end point of the mud pits, and it's flowing upstream into the next mud pit. And you can see it's, it's filling pretty quick. I did have a little bit of water already in the mud pits. Uh, but I'm going to have to add more to get the right viscosity. So as soon as that barrel empties out, I'll go turn the pump off. And on to the next step. We're getting close to starting to drill. And it's all hooked up. as much water as I would have thought but I can feel there's a cake forming on the inside of the mud pits and they're holding water they're not losing water but it's taking almost a full bag of bentonite to uh, to get it to where it's at right now Here I use the marsh funnel to measure the viscosity of the drilling mud. I went 4x speed so you don't have to watch the whole time. So that first time it was still a little too runny so I added some more drilling mud and tried it again. So we will see. I hope I don't lose a bunch of water. I'm gonna have to stop and, and make more mud, but um, I just did the marsh funnel. I was right at like 40 or 45. They say 40 to 50 for this kind of sand. So I'm gonna call that good. I'll get started here. All right, we're gonna do this.
So as you're drilling, you have to get the hang of releasing the rope to let the drill rig lower as it goes. It'll actually drill pretty fast. Um, at the beginning here, I wasn't really releasing the rope fast enough. Um, so it's taking longer than it should have. Uh, but you can see here, I start to get the, get the hang of kind of feeding that rope through through my hand. I'm holding it with my right hand. I have it wrapped once around the handle on the drill. And here you can see I'm just getting a feel for it. Two things I think that made this harder than it needed to be. One was I should have had a better system for managing the rope and the hose. It kept getting in my way. Another is you can see how much the drill is shaking. I fabricated a bit to connect that red water swivel to my drill. And I didn't have that totally centered, which caused a lot of vibration and really beat me up. So I wish I had done that a little differently. I guess the final thing is my homemade tripod. I just used some down branches from around the property. I wish I had used thicker trees. Um, when I really need to hoist on that, uh, that rope and that pulley, um, there was a lot of flex and that caused some problems later. But here you can see after just a couple minutes, I'm already um, a couple feet down. Um, and it goes, and it goes and fits and starts a little bit. But often you can cover a couple feet in, in just a few seconds. Through this whole drilling process, you can notice the mud pit there on the right side of the screen. There's water flowing into that. That's because we're successfully pumping debris up out of the bottom of that drilling rig. Um, that's super important. There's a couple times during this where my bit got clogged and water stopped flowing. That effectively stops your drilling operation, so you gotta resolve the, the clog before you can continue. time to time you need to clear out the newly drilled debris out of your channel and out of your two mud pits because as the as the mud flows along that channel it leaves behind the debris from the from the hole so you can see that's what I'm doing now just making sure we're getting a good flow I think now you can see water flowing again. I think for a little while it was spilling up over the edge of that channel because there was a, a, you know, a high spot that had developed. And then here I'm building up one of the walls there to help make sure that doesn't happen again. we see that 
a little bit more on that water swivel so that's the red item that's hanging down off the, the drill off the motor head um, that's a critical piece of of being able to drill on your own I've seen some guys online make their own uh, I opted to just go buy one uh, there was somebody selling them on eBay for it was like 350 bucks um, but what that lets you do is hook your outlet pipe from from the trash pump um, to pump mud into the side of of um, the water swivel and then that sends the water down through your drilling pipe so that's hollow drilling pipe I just used um, I think I used half inch galvanized pipe that you get from the hardware store um, and it'll pump water uh, down through the bottom of your drill uh, rig so uh, it does that without having anything come back up and get in your drill so there's some seals in there that um, that enable that to happen so it's a fairly complicated device going again here but notice how it's spinning but it's not really going down that's again because I'm not managing the rope properly at this point so here I realize it well <laughs> first I swat a bug and then I realize it um, so then I have to loosen up that rope a little so the so the drill can actually feed down into the ground didn't get a good video of adding the first additional section of pipe there but so now we're on the second five foot pipe section Let's see how off center that bit is like I said I was really beat up by the end of this process my state you don't need any special license or permit to drill your own well um, you do need to let the DNR know where the location is going to be and then that was the end of it um, I think if you plan on putting like a potable well for the house or something you need to have a licensed installer put in the pump but that's not the case here.
So a little more rope management. And then once I get it figured out again, you can see this last couple feet uh, just goes like butter. So this is a pretty long video. I opted to show more of the footage. Uh, my hope is this is actually helpful for somebody that decides to take this on uh, yourself. Uh, but just to show you kind of um, as much of the process as I could. Uh, there I just cleaned out, you saw the, the drilling channel again and I grabbed a handful of that sand and set it aside uh, just to see if the sand changes as it goes down. So a little more rope management and then once I get it figured out again, you can see this last couple feet uh, just goes like butter. The way I added pipe sections is, uh, as you see, just a couple wrenches to unscrew it. I use pipe wrenches, and super important, you actually back off so you hoist the, the drill back a foot or so off the bottom of the well. You don't want that drill bit sitting at the bottom and potentially clogging. So that's what I did. You have to also, of course, turn off the, um, the water pump so it doesn't start spraying water all over. There, you can see, I think I made my first mistake with changing, and it's actually, after I released it, I set the pipe on the bottom of the well, which can cause a clog, and then you gotta pull it all out and, and unclog the thing. So here I'm threading the new pipe on. So now I got five more feet, and then I will hoist the drill up and connect that. And here you can notice the water is completely still. So despite getting the pump hose 
turned back on off camera, you don't see any water flowing. So that is a huge pain. Um, so now what I've done is took the water swivel off and I'm going to pull that pipe up out of the hole and clear the clog and then get started again. So super important not to let that drill bit uh, rest on the bottom. Um, something else that can happen, you can see it started to happen there. I, I, it was kind of hard for me to pull it up out of the ground. Is all the debris in the in the drill hole can start to settle on top of your drill bit, and if too much of that settles, um, you've got a problem. You might not be able to get your drill pipe up out of the hole. So. That never happened to me, um, but part of what you need to do to prevent that is, you know, anytime you stop drilling, um, and anytime you stop drilling and there's not water flowing, make sure you raise your drill pipe a bit. This is a great view for some of the care and feeding you need to do along the way. You can see there's that steady stream of drilling fluid flowing from the borehole through the channel into the mud pit. Anytime that stops, it's a problem. Another thing, you'd be surprised how quickly your channel can fill up with cuttings from the borehole, so you need to do what I'm doing here and scoop that out to make, make sure your channel stays clear. I find it helpful to have a barrel of water, water right next to the pit because it allows me to wash hands. And periodically I found I needed to add a little bit of water to the whole operation since you do lose some water in the drilling process. Each time you do that the viscosity potentially drops so you can add a little, little bit of extra bentonite along the way. Finally, there's a filter at the end of that intake hose that gets clogged with bits of clay and debris, so you need to clear that periodically as well. Here you can see, again, it's helpful to just have a barrel of water to wash hands. So don't let anybody tell you that this is easy work. This was ended up being a whole day operation, almost a half day just set up and then another half day drilling. Um, you can see, I mean, this is maybe three quarters of the way through the effort. I'm soaking wet, I'm tired, um, but been making good progress. This time I tried something new uh, with my drill pipe um, to try to hold it up off the bottom. Uh, I don't think it works particularly well. I wish I had built a, a, a better solution for holding the drill pipe uh, during pipe changes. Uh, but you can see what I tried here with the clamp and the bucket.
I'm really happy with the two mud pit design that I went with. The longer the water travels, the, the more debris has a chance to drop out of the suspension so you're not pumping debris back down into your, uh, into your well. Um, so having that channel and then the one mud pit on camera and then the other one just on the left hand side behind that block uh, did a nice job. So here I cleaned out the filter again and now you'll see I throw it aside. That's because I'm about to pull off the pipe and I don't want to get sprayed with water. So rather than turning off the pump, I just pull the inlet out of the of the mud pit, change the pipe and then throw it back in and let it reprime. Just some cord management there. And now the pipe is just about to release. And you can remember my clamp trick. Great, it worked until it didn't. And that right there was probably enough to clog the tip of my drill point.
after you drill for a section it's good to just let the water flow for a while to lift up all that debris that's in the um, in suspension so you'll see I'll stop every once in a while partly because I'm exhausted but the other reason is to uh, just let that water flow and and lift the cuttings out and a half inch. So that's pretty good. Hopefully I'm in the water. I didn't get any video of the casing 
but that's several sections of two and a half inch PVC pipe lowered down uh, the bottom uh, six feet or so of the casing I cut slots in with the angle grinder and then I slid a uh, filter cloth over uh, the bottom as well then lowered it into the hole then the goal is to use this filter sand um, and you dump it into the well hole um, so that it covers so it surrounds that casing uh, all the way up through the you know the, the bottom filter uh, slots so that's what I did here just didn't get any video of, uh, of the casing itself then after the sand you put in a layer of clay pellets um, you can use concrete as well I use clay um, to create a plug to kind of seal off um, or around the casing in the hole um, and then filled the rest in with sand Feed this down. We develop the well. Twenty-five foot hose. Okay, the next step is to condition the well. And the goal of this is to blow out any fine particles that may um, be accumulating near the bottom of the well that would clog up the filter um, surrounding the casing there. Uh, you really want the groundwater to be able to flow into the casing easily. So you can see I just fed the outlet hose from the trash pump down to the bottom and I have the inlet coming from a clean 50 gallon um, garbage can and then I just pump a whole lot of water in there fast and then that up and down motion creates some extra pressure so the goal is just to blow out a bunch of the particles in the, in the well uh, they say that'll increase your yield your how many gallons per minute your well can produce if you do a good job with this filming all right we're lower and 30 feet down we got 20 in already or 10 in already yeah there it goes that thing everybody good. hands on nice and on nice time. and easy oh yes there yeah. it goes wow I think I heard it at once. going down Beep! there it is oh I could have got away what do you think are down there I don't know infinity
Oh, Ooh, man. infinity. Dana, right, infinity. So, <gasps> gonna You're gonna love my filming skills. <laughs> I'm gonna be going in. And out. I'm famous. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> oh man. I had a bloody mosquito on my forehead. Hey, we know you cast and someday you're gonna be a millionaire. Famous millionaire. You're so cute. He's a cute kid. He's so cute. Stop. Wait! Alright, it's going down. Getting that chin. Yeah, right? It's going down. It's going down. Is oh no. Third pipe. I don't want to drop it. Is it in the water? All the way. Is it going to plunk up? Is it going to plunk up? It's a good question, Lily. Just kind of squeezes oh, it. Oh, you can feel it? Yep, there's water in there. Oh. It's it's working. Oh! <gasps> what? <gasps> wow! Jim! It's alive! Oh, why is, it, you, I don't, is our math complete? 